So I'm at the point of the job where we've filled in quite a lot of the structure around us and we're now going to turn the corner. We're now going to put the valley rafters in and this is the sort of thing that stumps quite a few carpenters and there's so many things that can work against you. For example, if the building's slightly out of square, if the building's slightly out of level, where you're starting and finishing from could be not geometrically perfect and that could be nothing to do with the carpenter on site. Now, as you know, we tamed this structure and we got it really, really close to perfectly square. We also spent a bit of care putting the wall plates on and we got it lovely and level. So, my valley, I'll show you this one first. My valley starts from where the roof changes direction. So in this corner, and it travels all the way up to where the two different heights intersect. And I'll point that out in a minute. I'll take you up there and show you. And we're gonna have a diagonal member called a valley rafter, which is gonna start here finish there and then all of the valley jacks, we call them valley jacks, are going to come from ridge to valley, valley back up to ridge and give us that kind of inverted pyramid type shape which is absolutely beautiful. We've also got to pick up the ashlar wall here so we've actually got the valley travelling over the corner of this ashlar wall with the bird's mouth that will have a stud underneath it which transfers that load down onto the low brain wall beneath me and on the other side we don't have this position, but we are putting a beam further up to catch the valley or halfway up towards the ridge. So this is a mock-up of a valley rafter. So this is the valley rafter plumb cut. This is the valley rafter seat cut. And this is the top cut, which again is a plumb cut. There's nothing to it. Now, using my metric square, I shall fetch it. One second. So using my new metric square, I will show you this in a bit more detail. I have two marks. I've obviously got my striking point for rafters and my angles or my degrees of pitch. I've also got a striking point here for hip and valley, which also uses the same degrees of pitch. So this pitch of roof is 45 degrees. So to set out my valley, I would simply put my valley point on here and I would bring it round. Let me put my glasses on because I can't read much. And I would bring it round to 45 degrees. That gives me my top cut and my bottom cut. So what that means is at this level, that's what sits over the plate as marked on the end of the square. And on this side, the plumb cut meets the ridge and the rafters as marked on the square for ease of use. So therefore, we now need to know the length. So based on what I've said about some buildings being out of square, some buildings being out of level, we need to either do a direct measurement, which is going to be the most accurate, but you need to know where to start and you need to know where to stop. For the bottom, it's easy because, let's sack the juggler. For the bottom, it's easy because we have, in this case, we have a bird's mouth and a bird's mouth meeting, so our valley intersects with the center. The shoulder here doesn't come up to the shoulder there, and that's for the simple reason being when we put battening on and it comes through, it meets the center of the valley. If you raise up your valley rafter like this, especially if you're using a thick member and you put your battening on, on the roof, it rides up and it all goes a little bit out of shape. So that's how it should look. The center there with the center of that. So when you mitre in, in our case, we're using valley tiles. That means we bring the battens right into the corner. That's how it should look right into the center. And then when these ones return, they equally will come into the center. So therefore measuring it for direct measurement is quite tricky. You can't fit a tape right into there. And if you mark this, you can mark it to there, you've still got to hold the tape in an awkward position. So sometimes I actually prefer to measure from the exact centre and work everything back. So the same applies at the top. Generally speaking on a valley where you've got two ridges meeting at the same level, your valley rafter is going to act like this. So you can actually measure from point to point 
and set everything out very easily on the bench for cutting. In our case, we have two different level ridges, which means that our valley rafter is going to have a splayed cut all the way through one side and a splayed cut all the way through the other side, so it actually comes onto the side of the ridge, so the splayed cut will continue straight up like that. So it makes it a little bit more tricky for setting out, but it just takes practice. So what we do know is I can work this out geometrically, and I do that by a simple calculation. It's just like working out a rafter. I take my span, I halve it, I take off the thickness of the ridge or half the thickness of the ridge, and I multiply that by however many meters it runs at that pitch to get my overall length. Now in this case, I've run the calculation and it came to 6, 000, sorry, 5,987 millimeters. That's 5,987. And then I checked it and we're bang on the money. So I could do this one geometrically, but as I say, we checked it for square, we checked it for level, and I've taken great care of putting this roof together. So it does work geometrically. But we can do a direct measurement and then we can run it in. The only thing we've got to do here is, is put the ashlar bird's mouth in and again, I can do that geometrically as well. That's where the valley's gonna sit over. It's crucial that it sits on there nice and tight and it's bird's mouthed over to the same margin. So I'm gonna set all that out. We're gonna get them cut and fixed and it's gonna look spectacular. Now, the downside I've got here is my lengths of timber are six meters long. And even though the measurement is slightly under six meters, because of the way we set out, even if we put the very end of the tape there and cut the point on the top and we measured down our mark, we can get it, but the end of the timber is square. So we lose that bit. So believe it or not, I'm gonna cut it back by say 1200 and scarf joint a section on to get me up to the uh, right length. It's really, it's really harsh. I can sometimes get 6.6 .6 meter lengths, but I couldn't get those at this point. So that's fine. I'm gonna run a scarf joint on and I'm gonna run the scarf joint at the top of both of them. You could run it at the bottom, but something just I prefer, if, it's, if this is projecting past, sitting over here, it also sits over that wall there, carries on up to the valley, then that'll be a really nice job, it's super strong. So let's get downstairs and make them, get them fixed, and then I can get the valley jacks in and get this roof finished. So we measured our valley lengths. We did a direct measurement, so we can do that geometrically, but we always check them by direct measurement. I cut a foot and I cut a top and I use this to mark exactly where it's gonna lay. And from those points, wherever you choose to do it, as long as you remember where you're marking to, we set out, this is a valley here, this is a valley here. They weren't long enough, so we've scarfed the piece on the end which is going to be above the bird's mouth, so it's, it's cantilevered, it's absolutely lovely. So the way I remember it is because I marked this one upstairs in relation to how I had it up there, I've got the dimension written on it. So this is going to travel, that's my valley there, and that's going to be my wide splay cut. So what I'm going to effectively do is I've put a plum cut, a hip valley plum cut on the top here, okay? at 45 degrees, which is what the pitch of our roof is. Now I'm gonna put a splay cut in there. Let's just get the circular saw for that. I'll put a splay cut on that. This gives us the exact angle that we need. So that's the top cut, and I've measured from this point here, which is relative to this point on my small sort of sample valley, and I've written the measurement down. So I measure all the way down this edge, five meters, 935 in this case.
So five meters, 935. And we're gonna do this, basically. And now we'll transfer our marks on this end. So this is my shoulder. So I know that my shoulder is gonna be a cut line. So we'll mark that in as well. Then we'll mark our seat cut using our template that we're really happy with. So I'm marking this here in line with that. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna mark a seat cut there. That's what we're gonna take off. And then we cut these on the angle. First of all, I'll square it through. And I'll mark the other side. Mark a plumb cut on that one as well. I'll cut those off. These are, because the obviously it's an equal pitch roof, so it's gonna be 45 degrees, the bisection angle, which is very convenient because all circular saws generally will make 45 degrees. This one makes it to about 53, so be careful if you've got one of these not to wind it round too far, because it's gonna be wrong. I'm gonna cut that off. Cut that off first. Flip that over and do the other side. I'm gonna cut that side off as well, which is a nice job, gives us that lovely crisp point. There we have the foot of our valley and the top of our valley. We just need to put the ashlar bird's mouth in and then we can fix that. So my bird's mouth over my ashlar rises exactly 1742. So it's 1742. Oh look, there's a little tiny a beast. A furry little dude. Furry yeah. I can't tell which is his eyes. Which is the front and which is the back. Story of my life, that is. Which is the front and which is the back. Anyway, so we, we, we're doing, um, we're dropping 1,742 mil and we're traveling, basically, I'll plumb this down as well. Let me go and get a level. And I'm traveling on our mark here. Right there. No worries. That's what happens when your best mate's filming, isn't it? You're like, oh. And we're traveling 2410. Let's go and put that on. 
So I'm going to just step off with my square. I'm 1,742 millimetres from the plate to the plate. That's the rise of the wall plates, if you like. Let's just move this out of my way. So it's going to rise 1,742. Now, stepping off basically means here's 200, for example. Here's 400. Here's 600. Eight hundred, thousand, twelve hundred, and so on, twelve hundred, fourteen hundred, sixteen hundred, and one four two. So that is the level of the seat cut on that bird's mouth there. Now we need to know where our plum cut is. And for that, the going is 2410. So we just do that the other way now by using the bottom scale, if you like. And I'm going to count in threes now. So three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four plus a little bit, which was 10, I believe. 24.10 plus 10 mil, 24.10. Now that effectively is the bird's mouth over the top of our wall. Now what this does, it's actually splays over, so I need to mark that to the other side. And that is gonna be splayed Splay is exactly the thickness of a rafter, so. so effectively I'm cutting the actual bird's mouth across like this. That's what's coming out over to here. That's what's coming out there. And that'll be the bird's mouth. Put a plunker on there. That is the bird's mouth is there. And jobs are good. Finish him off. That's it, that's ready to fit. Now this is where you want to get, make sure all your, all your cuts are the right way around. Yeah. 
Otherwise, you think all that time making the scarf joint, you only get one crack at this. I'm going to turn it right over. And what I'll do is I'll find the point to you, just careful of the scarf. Yeah. Just hold it, just let me rest for a second, Ed. Yep. Right now. So I'm going to drop my bottom in, yeah. and then you're going to aim yours towards where it's got to go. You, got, you know where you've got to go? There. So you want to be like that, aiming in that direction. And that would be, that would be your fixing there, yeah? Okay. And then that would be wanting to be dead plumb, like that. You can then see how much this ridge has got to go over because it's out of plumb. The bottom would come round. See, so as, you, as you pull that, like that, then you tighten everything up. So I'd put a screw in the bottom and put it around. 